Hi, welcome to another episode of Middleware Friday, episode 66, the 18th of May, 2018, ingesting data using logic apps. So I'll be talking today about the way you could do ingestion of data using a logic app. Furthermore, there's some community content around uh, this topic, ingesting data, but then with regards to uh, data lake, and there's also something around um, integra integration platform as a service in general. So also starting with integration platform as a service, um, Logic App recently, or at least part of the offering that Microsoft has for integration, has been uh, labeled as a leader in, in the magic quadrant of Gartner. So I layer, and it's been qualified as the enterprise integration platform as a service leader. And as you can see here, it, of course, integration is not that simple always. It can, it can be a hard process to, to do some integration. Fortunately, you know, with uh, Logic Apps uh, leveraging, first of all, of all uh, the, um, the out of the box connectors, there's about 200 plus managed connectors for SaaS solutions like Salesforce, Office 365. Um, you can do um, connect to Azure services, um, service bus, etc., and on premise even. So, and when there's even not a connector, as you've seen in a previous episode of Midor Friday, you can create your own custom connector. So there are certain ways where you can um, connect to certain uh, APIs, um, set, uh, platform services, etc., and connect them to other platform services, SaaS solutions, etc. So you can do, you really do like cloud integration solutions with Logic Apps. You could do hybrid integration solutions. Uh, you can even build reactive type of solutions, uh, having a Logic App as a um, and handler of events, which you can do um, with regards to event grids, something that also has been shown in previous um, our Friday episode around event grid. So you can really do some cool stuff um, using Logic Apps. And you can find um, this um, Gartner report through um, the Logic App um, blog post, a log blog post around, around this news. So this is the Magic Conrad, so this is taken from that reprint. And as you can see, Microsoft is now a leader. And it used to be um, a little bit lower in the visionary uh, part of this magic quadrant, like last time. They put this out like a year or so ago. And now, because they're really involved into a very mature service, they now are in the leader quadrant. Um, I've kind of pointed this out too, not that I predicted this, but I, I kind of felt that when I was on stage and integrated in US and Europe, that because of so many use cases and the capability and the effort that the product group really put into this service, that eventually I thought, at least the road ahead, that they would become a leader. And now it, it, it kind of happened. They've been qualified as such. Again, not because I'm predict, um, predicting it, predicted in a certain way. I'm not a Nostradamus or anything, but just felt like, you know, if they kept this going, they must eventually be in that part of the quadrant. And fortunately that happened. So congratulations to everyone in the product group that really worked hard. And uh, also people in the community really pointing out uh, this service, creating some great content around it. So that was really cool. And also through Middle of Friday, we, uh, we try to push um, the capabilities of this service, even in this um, episode. So as I said, connectors are really an important part of this capability. So you can qualify the, um, the connectors or you can categorize, categorize them in uh, standards. So like service bus, power BI, et cetera. There's some on-premise connectors. So in, in conjunction with the on-premise data gateway, so you can connect to SharePoint, SQL, uh, Oracle DB. You can even use a file share and um, something you find in an online content as well in an, another previous episode of Middle of Friday. We've showed this as well with hybrid integration. There are some integration account type of connectors where you can do some um, thing around transforming your data, um, whether it be JSON or XML validated and encoding, decoding with flat files. So a little bit about um, transforming your data in general. And there's some enterprise connectors. So just pointed out here too, MQ and SAP. So let you pay a little bit more for these connectors than for your standard connectors. Now the way you can trigger your um, Logic app is either, you know, you have a trigger action kind of thing and actions and 
Zyla, you can do this through polling. So for instance, with reoccurrence or um, poll a, um, or listen basically to a service bus um, queue or topic, or you can have push triggers. So it's more when your um, logic app is pushed and this could be done by a request or um, HTTP or a webhook type of mechanism. Um, reoccurrence, for instance, is a good um, polling trigger, something I'll show later in my demonstration. Then when you ingest data or when you connect to sources, of course, you deal with uh, data, so with certain content types. So this could be application JSON or flat file text, um, XML, or even kind of streaming type of data. And you're able within your logic app to uh, kind of uh, move or change from one data source to or um, content type to the other one and some of the built-in capability with expressions, as you can see here, and you find somewhere around dealing with logic app content types through uh, the URL you see here in the Microsoft documentation. And then, of course, there's something like transform. So if you um, ingested your data into the logic app, you can either apply a liquid map, um, something that is kind of open source. A source. You find this through, uh, if you look for Shopify, so that's why you can find more details around liquid and liquid maps. But you can also do XML uh, enterprise type of transformation. So in Visual Studio 2015, there, there's a tool or at least an add-in available where you could um, create uh, schemas um, and even transforms, even a flat file schema. So if you do not have a BizTalk environment, then you can use these tools. Otherwise, you could uh, leverage your BizTalk environment uh, with Visual Studio templates for schemas and transforms and then upload eventually. So even if it's a liquid template or whether it's a template to do XML or flat file type of transformations, um, you could upload those or you need to upload those to your integration account, which is kind of a placeholder for these type of artifacts. And when you ingest data, so if you ingest your data through Logic App, then you can store them in multiple ways within Azure. So you can do it in SQL Azure, you can store it in Data Lake, you can store it in Cosmos DB, or you can do it in SQL Azure or uh, table storage, whether it be blobs or table itself. And once you store that data, you could eventually, for instance, leverage that by visualizing it in um, Power BI, for instance. So I'll have a demo where I'm um, ingesting data, earthquake data from a source. So that kind of, kind of an, an RSS type of feed or a JSON feed, I'm ingesting this. And subsequently I'm storing that data um, into a Cosmos DB collection. So I'm leveraging um, Cosmos DB uh, SQL, or at least the Cosmos um, document DB. And through that, I'm able to well, not push in or have that uh, Power BI pull that data into uh, a report. So the Cosmos uh, DB connector is, is in preview in, um, in Power BI. So you basically have to point out to your um, um, Cosmos DB or document DB instance URL Data specify data space and collection, and then also um, provide the key and then connect to it, and then you you ingest that data into your Power BI, and then you can do some visualizations. So, what I'm kind of doing is there's um, the USGS, so Science for Changing the World, kind of a public website where I could go to and I could um, ingest some of the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ingest data from some of the significant earthquakes in the past um, week. So there's a few listed here, and some you will see back later on in the visualization. So what I've done with regards to Logic App is that I created a um, Logic App based on a recurrence. So I'm kind of defining the fact that I'm going to ingest this data um, from that public website every day. So I'm doing again, and to this kind of point endpoint. So it's kind of restful. So I'm saying, okay, give me all that data. And I'm going to parse that data because I'm interested in the features and the features are several features. Features are kind of, you know, an event of an earthquake somewhere. And I'm going to store this into my um, document DB collection. So if I flip over to that document DB collection, you can see some of the data here. So here I've kind of put out a query, query that I'm going to use in my visualization, but in general, the data looks like, like this. There's, there's several documents in here. And to give you a little bit of sense of how that data looks, this is the data of uh, significant earthquakes from one week. So that's the latest week. 
and with the um, JSON editor online, I could drill down in this data, observe it and look into it. And this is also how I kind of basically created this query because I want to extract some of that data. So I'm interested in the, uh, the Richter scale, the magnitude, um, the um, kind of alert place and what type it is. So these are all earthquakes. And I will be able to extract that data into Power BI and then I could, as you can see, these are the places where those earthquakes took place. So it's the Philippines, etc. And this is the data source behind it. Oh, so these so there's five of them and based on which scale, etc. So this is the data I'm pulling from my document DB and then enabling me to do the visualization. So hopefully in this demo, I was able to um, quickly give you a sense how you could do ingestion of data using a logic app, store it, and then basically act upon it. So I'm just using Power BI in this case to visualize some of that data, just as a ways of an example. Now, an alternative to this um, is, for instance, leveraging a Power BI template. So if you want to tap into um, ingest data from um, social media like Twitter, you could use this pre-built template which just ingests that data using your Twitter account based on a certain um, hashtag or kind of search parameter you're looking for, store that eventually into a SQL database and then do your visualization as well. So this is kind of the brand and campaign management for Twitter, but it's a pre-built template also showing a way to ingest data from um, social media channel Twitter. And generally, if you look into, if you want to do something like ingesting data and store it and then basically do something with that data, of course, it always depends a little bit on the volume and frequency, one of the things. So if you look back in the BizTalk days, when you had a high volume and a low frequency, then you're more triggered to more, oh so yeah, let's do something like a SQL Server uh, integration services. Um, if it's high frequency, lower volume, then you're more into a messaging type of scenario and then you use BizTalk in general. But if you look at... Um, to the cloud, um, if it's more ETL type of thing with high volumes and low frequency, then for instance, you could also leverage Azure Data Factory instead of doing something like with a Logic App. Um, especially if you need more control of the data, you want to do some more heavy transforms and you want to be less dependent on, let's say, schemas and mappings, but you want to do a little bit different. So it's more into um, data warehousing type of scenarios. So it's a little bit different when you just do something like I just demo. And it also depends a little bit on, on pricing. So it's large volume when you crunch a lot of data, then maybe logic apps is not the suitable um, technology for it because you could end up in maybe too much cost. And especially if it's more batch-like process, then in a, an Azure Data Factory would be more suitable. The other way is if even if you look at from a higher level and uh, more into the Microsoft Cloud um, ecosystem, you could do something similar, which I just showed you, but then using Microsoft Flow which kind of sits on top of um, logic apps. So it's just as performance. It's also a first class citizen, but it's targeted for a different type of persona. So a pro integration user, group, uh, pro integration user uh, or developer would use, for instance, more logic app. But if it's more a business user, um, more from a higher abstract, then um, and especially more working in, in a, an Office 365 environment, you could leverage Flow and do something similar by ingesting some public data and do what he likes to do with it. So then there's some community content. So when I was thinking or looking into this, this topic, I found um, a blog post from uh, a former colleague of mine from, uh, from last year, um, who also a little bit talked about how you could use logic apps to ingest data and put it into a data lake store. So this is kind of what an interesting um, little blog post uh, from him. So it also showed that there's a way of um, using a logic app to store data into a data lake. And then with regards back to uh, when I started this episode talking about the uh, integration platform as a service um, report from Gartner or the enterprise integration platform as a service report. Um, I found this all another interesting uh, uh, content around just in general around um, in looking at logic app as a, an ipass type of solution so 
definitely would recommend also looking in if you want some more in-depth so the the um the Garner report is more overall and comparing into other um, vendors of iPaaS solutions but uh, if you really particularly want to look into logic apps then this also really good summarizes what uh, logic app entails um, and what it can do for you if you got feedback please uh, keep that coming um, either for Twitter or for middle or Friday at gmail.com um, and then again, I'd like to thank Bistook360 for being a great host. And, and also you viewers, thanks for, for watching again to this episode and previous episodes by me and Ken around uh, Logic App uh, integration, flow, etc. And then, of course, Bistook360 also will be hosting another Integrate 218. And this will be in a few weeks. So it will be in June, 4 and 16 June. It's now full priced. So still tickets available. Um, if you're not able to attend the free full days, then there's also now a day pass option. So let's say there's 25 speakers, free days, but you're only able to come on a Monday or maybe only able to come on a Tuesday or Wednesday, then you can have this per person per day pass. So that option is there as well. And I'll leave you in the news codes.